Today we're going to be looking at another one of Corridor Crew's videos. Specifically this one, If Atoms Were Tennis Balls. This is another one of their size comparison videos. Just like their nuclear explosion size comparison. If you haven't seen my reaction to that, I will pin that down in the comments so you can check it out. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Check this out. In 2013, IBM released the smallest movie ever made. It's a simple stop motion short film, but what makes it special is that they controlled the placement of individual atoms to tell their story. Everyone that, that is so cool. <laughs> that atoms are tiny. They're the building blocks of all matter, but I don't think people fully appreciate just how small atoms really are. You see, you can't just use a regular microscope to look at atoms. They're literally too small to interact with light, making them invisible. You have to use a special machine called a scanning tunneling microscope, which basically maps the electrical charges of atoms to create a model representation, like what the researchers at IBM did to make their movie. Even though it seems like we're looking at individual atoms, we're really not. So what- That's exactly right. Specifically, visible light is radiation, electromagnetic radiation between 400 and 700 nanometers. And nanometers, that's 10 to the minus 9th meters. And atoms are on the order of 10 to the minus 10th meters. And atomic nuclei, the strong nuclear force region, is all the way down to 10 to the minus 15th meters. So yes, atoms, nuclei, much, much smaller <laughs> than what you could actually see with visible light. And they mentioned a tunneling microscope. Now what's that? That involves quantum tunneling, which is where particles can pass through a barrier that classical physics would suggest it's insurmountable. In the context of a scanning tunneling microscope, this basically involves the flow of electrons being the sharp tip of the microscope's probe in order to get your sample. And when this tip is brought close enough to an atom on the surface, electrons from the tip can quantum tunnel through the vacuum or the thin insulating layer between the tip and the sample, the atom that they're trying to look at. And you just adjust the distance between the tip and the sample to create the little topographic map and in the case that he was talking about a little movie and these things can get up to on the order of 10 to the minus 12 meters so atoms but not nuclei it's really really cool how those things work what does an atom actually look like i mean if we were to scale one up to the size of a tennis ball it would probably look like this nothing and that's because atoms are mostly empty space Yes. Let's take a simple atom like hydrogen, for example. It consists of just an electron and a proton, but the electron doesn't simply just orbit around the proton the same way a planet orbits around a star. Instead, That's there's a true. field which shows where an electron might be found, and these fields are what define the size of an atom. The shape of these fields can get kind of weird when you start adding more electrons. But uh, these little orbitals here. So they're basically probability functions, and these orbitals where you see like the p orbitals, the f orbitals, the s orbitals. They're not even 100% accurate. We're talking about a 95% confidence interval. So 95% chance it's anywhere within this little funky pacifier looking thing. It could be on the other side of the universe, but probably not. Hydrogen, it's simply a sphere. To really drive home just how empty atoms really are, if we were to instead scale a proton up to this size, the entire atom would be eight kilometers wide. Yes. <laughs> that means That's this awesome. hydrogen atom is the size of downtown Los Angeles. With I love that effect. Okay, this was gonna be good. The electron somewhere within this sphere. It might be four kilometers that way or four <laughs> kilometers this way, up there, down here, needle in a haystack. anywhere in between. If you thought finding a needle in a haystack was impossible, <laughs> try finding an electron in an atom. But let's go back to when our atom was the size of a tennis ball. And atoms come in various sizes, but for True. this video, I'm making the assumption that an atom is one angstrom wide. And here we're talking about an atom. So I'm assuming he means an el an element, so it isn't it isn't charged at all. If it it's charged, positive ion or a negative ion, that can greatly increase the range of that sphere. Basically, when you add or subtract electrons, it can mess up all those neat little probability functions that he just showed. 
<laughs> but I'm assuming he's just going to go with an element like a staple hydrogen just because that's way easier to visualize. Tenth of a nanometer. Our tennis ball is 67 millimeters wide, making our scale 670 million to one. <laughs> A group of atoms like this is called a molecule, and this one in particular's cool. name is adenine. And there's nothing special about these individually, they're fairly simple, but when formed together, they become something very cool. They become the source code of uh, all for life, DNA. Yeah. DNA. Now, traditional models of DNA are fairly simple in form, but the problem is that by showing them as a literal twisted ladder, we don't have the context for how small DNA really is, because in reality, it's like 20 atoms wide. It's very, very tiny. That's true. Whenever someone makes an artist's rendition of DNA, it's always huge because you're usually starting from an atom up or a smaller molecule up, like you said. You rarely see the DNA as small in any of these little animations or displays involving DNA, which I always thought was a bit unusual. A chain of molecules get stacked millions of times to form a single strand of DNA stretching thousands <laughs> of kilometers in length, way out into space at this scale. Molecules get progressively more complex as these groupings awesome. become larger, such as with proteins, organelles, and viruses. But at a certain point, they become so complex that they become full-on molecule economies, and we call yep. those cells. Molecule economy, I haven't heard that one before. The red blood cell is about seven microns across, making it one of the smallest cells in the human body. It's important because it acts like a FedEx truck delivering oxygen to the whole body. But even though our scaled DNA would be about a meter wide, a red blood cell would be five kilometers wide. They'd appear- well, Hopefully with a bit more reliability. After all, if your shipments delay on that, that would be anemia. Sky like alien dropships coming to exterminate humanity. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. A single drop of blood contains 5 million red blood cells. In fact, your body produces 2 million of these every second. There are trillions of these running through your veins right now. That is such a crazy fact that I wouldn't be surprised your if you body's going to be bigger than the earth I mean, on this scale. What if you did? Regular table salt is just a compound of sodium and chlorine, and thanks to the way that these atoms are packed together, they form these really cool looking cubic crystals. Because a typical table salt crystal is about half a millimeter wide, that scales up to over 300 <laughs> kilometers. This is several times larger than the asteroid that killed off all the dinosaurs. I love An it. An impact of this size would reduce the entire planet to lava. And, and, it's, and of course it's a cube too, so it's got that whole sinister geometry trope in effect, like you see in 2001 Space Odyssey. This guy the would be the destroyer of worlds. So it's obvious that with our atomic scale, even tiny things become massive. But when I was crunching the numbers for this video, I discovered something really weird about pennies. I measured this penny at 19.02 millimeters wide. When you multiply that by our scale of 670 million, you end up with a penny 12,743 kilometers wide. Now, why is that special? Well, the Earth's diameter at its equator is 12,742 kilometers wide. Somehow, the penny at this atomic scale is the same size as our planet. With a <laughs> That's amazing. How big is a person? So I guess 670 million, if you're in the ballpark between one to two meters, so over a billion meters, so comparable to the sun. All right. Of only a single kilometer. To put that into perspective, <laughs> the thickness of the dog penny would we appear trust, 950 though. kilometers wide. And this really helps put into context just how small atoms really are. Just imagine a giant planet-sized disc filled with tennis balls. Copper balls. But now balls. let's have some fun. Remember when we scaled a proton up to a tennis ball and how big the whole atom got? How big would a penny be at that scale? It would be one and a half billion kilometers wide. Oh, so now it's a that proton. That is the size of Jupiter's orbit around the sun. That is incredibly huge, but can we go e further? Just like an atom, a proton is also mostly empty space. It's actually composed of a bunch of subatomic particles that we call quarks. According to the standard model, quarks are actual literal points with no physical size at all, because size is kind of irrelevant at the quantum. However, there is some evidence that perhaps a quark is about 2,000 times smaller than a proton. 10 to the minus 18 meters is the number I'm used to hearing for quarks, but he kind of has a point when talking about elementary particles. Um, electrons would also be another example of elementary particles. They can kind of act as if they have no size at all, but... If we were to scale a quark, 
up to the size of a tennis ball. How big would our penny be then? It would become hundreds of times bigger than our solar entire system, solar yep. system, coming in at just under a third, third of a light, light year in length. But now we're on the cosmic scale and suddenly this massive penny becomes tiny again. I mean, our closest neighboring star, Alpha Centauri, is about four light years away. And it would take 14 of these pennies just to reach it. In comparison, our <laughs> so Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years across. What do we have to do to put a dent into that scale? There is a unit of distance that plank, is considered plank. to be the smallest length mathematically He's going for possible it. Plank, before plank. the laws of physics fall apart. And it is called the Planck length. Now, this is a length of a plank, but this is not what a plank length is. It measures out to 1.6 <laughs> times 10 to the negative 35 meters. And I realize that number might not mean much to you, but this is a number so it's pretty unimaginably small. tiny that if we were to apply our tennis ball scale, our penny would be bigger than our entire galaxy. Except to say that as an understatement would be an understatement. The entire observable, observable. universe is 93 billion light years wide. And our Planck penny would be 90,000 times bigger than, than that. the observable Let universe. Let me show you exactly <laughs> how big that that is. If we were to confine the entire observable universe into just a single pixel on a 4K TV, you would need over 800 TVs Whoa. just to see our entire penny. I was not expecting him to go that direction, but that that's awesome. And hey, that's, that's relatable. That's a good relatable example. Just pixels on your TV. I, I like it. That is how small the Planck length is. But the Rose Bowl garden Infinity out there? goes both ways. Our universe is inconceivably large, and yet it is also inconceivably small. It really feels like a fractal with no end in how big or small it can possibly be. Our only limit is how far we can see. Thanks for watching. That was awesome. <laughs> Thanks again for the recommendation for that one. I like that he used some nice, relatable examples. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.